Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Smoking is bad for you. And even though people know they can get addicted from smoking, I still wonder why people smoke in the first place. I have never smoked my entire life. I never did it in the past, and I don't plan on doing it in the future, and I'm proud of myself for that. But I also wonder if it's possible for a peanut to smoke. The Smoking Peanut is the episode where Spongebob throws a peanut at a giant oyster named Clamu, who then starts to cry like crazy. Oh, maybe peanuts can smoke. Like pressure, this episode aired on March 8, 2001, and it's the first time the Bikini Bottom Zoo makes an appearance in the series. It's only shown a few times throughout the show, but it's still a valid location, and I wanted to mention it. Yeah, I know, I'm running out of ideas for things to talk about. This episode also has Patrick dress up as a detective and presumably lick Spongebob before he is shown with a yellow popsicle, and Spongebob lies about having hair. Sorry, Sandy, I have to... Uh, uh, go get my haircut! Does he? This episode also turned this frame of Spongebob sitting down into a Alright, I'm gonna head out joke online. It seems like any singular frame these days can instantly take off and become popular, can it? And I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing. I do love me some good jokes from the show, but I'd prefer if the jokes are from the actual episode, and it's obvious these days people take anything way too far, which make companies try to profit off of stupid and also dumb jokes. I know I'm a broken record, but I'd prefer if people actually care about the episode for what it's actually about and not remember only a single frame from it. So with that in mind, let's watch this episode and see what it actually brings to the table. Oh boy, I can't wait to see a peanut smoke! So the episode starts up and the Bikini Bottom Zoo is having its annual free day and Mr. Krabs is taking everything from the zoo. Spongebob and Patrick arrive at Oyster Stadium where they wanted to see Clamu, the world's biggest oyster, do tricks. When they run into the stadium, they see that Clamu was asleep. Wait, why is the oyster named Clamu? Clams and oysters are not the same thing. Spongebob tried to wake her up, but to no avail, and Patrick left. Spongebob threw a sea peanut at Clamu, which did indeed wake her up. Patrick came back, but instead of performing tricks, the oyster started to cry loudly. The zoo workers tried to calm her down, but she just threw one of them out of the stadium. Everybody at the zoo went into a panic, and the other told Spongebob and Patrick to leave the stadium. After they left the zoo, Spongebob started to feel guilty. Patrick thought about investigating the crime, but Spongebob said there was no need to. I didn't know animal abuse was illegal underwater. Spongebob started to think he wouldn't have to worry about what he did, but the biggest news story was Clamu crying so loudly she was heard above the surface and it was making other Bikini Bottomites sad as well. Spongebob turned off the news and started acting defensive towards Gary. Spongebob knew that this was getting out of hand and started to worry that everybody would hate him. He went to Squidward for advice about the situation. Squidward thought this meant that Spongebob knew who did this and wanted to turn in the culprit, but Spongebob claimed he didn't know who did it and Squidward just slammed the door on him. Patrick came out dressed as a detective telling Spongebob he was investigating the case. He also decided to start questioning a little piece of grass. Grass? How is there grass underwater? Spongebob ran to Sandy's to ask for advice, but at the tree dome, Sandy was more interested in teaching whoever upset the oyster a lesson. Spongebob started to get twitchy and made up an excuse about getting a haircut and just ran home. When he got home, Patrick came up and claimed to be closer to solving the mystery of this crime, particularly by finding Spongebob's bag of peanuts and licks a yellow popsicle. Spongebob goes inside and the police arrive at his door. No, not the police! The police ask Spongebob a few questions about going to the zoo, the peanut, and being at the oyster's lair with Patrick. Spongebob admits that they were all true, and the cops arrested Patrick. Well, Patrick was the last person holding the peanut bag. Spongebob was shocked to see Patrick get arrested and chased after the cop car. The police took Patrick to the stadium and chained him to a platform right next to Clamu. The crowd threw peanuts at Patrick out of spite when they thought he was the one to blame. Spongebob arrived at the stadium and admitted that he was the one who threw the peanut because he hoped that that would clear Patrick's name. Unfortunately, the crowd didn't believe him and decided to throw peanuts at both of them. But then, the zookeeper arrived with the real croak, Mr. Krabs. I knew it! No you fucking didn't! The zookeeper stated the reason the oyster cried in the first place was Mr. Krabs stole Clamu's pearl. 
He returned the pearl to Clamu, and everybody was happy. Then the pearl started to hatch, and a baby came out, revealing Clamu was a mom, and the reason she was crying in the first place was because she realized her pearl, and therefore her baby, was missing. Mr. Krabs claims he did it because it was spree day, the crowd threw peanuts at him, and the episode ends. Wait, where was the peanut that was supposed to smoke? So that was the smoking peanut, and I say that is an awesome episode. This does so much right. The plot, the build-up, the comedy, and the big reveal at the end. The story starts off as usual with some kind of shenanigans, which quickly turns into a much bigger situation. The oysters crying was constantly heard in the background throughout the episode, and more and more people were talking about how much they were fed up with Clamu crying and wanted to do something to whoever made her cry. And at this point, we think Spongebob was the reason she was crying, and Spongebob should just come clean. Then when Patrick gets arrested because they thought he was the one who made the oyster cry, this finally pushes Spongebob to admit what he has done, which he does. Then there's a much bigger twist when the episode reveals the real reason the oyster was crying was because Mr. Krabs took her pearl away. Then the pearl hatched, revealing it was an egg, and the oyster was crying because she couldn't find her egg, which had her baby. When Clamu started crying earlier in the episode, we don't know it's because her egg and baby were missing, and since Spongebob was the only character we saw doing anything to her, we think Spongebob is the one to blame. And all the build up throughout the episode makes the reveal of Mr. Krabs being the real villain all the more impactful. And even though we go the majority of this episode without knowing that Mr. Krabs stole the oyster's egg, it's still foreshadowed a couple times near the beginning. Since it's free day at the zoo, Mr. Krabs is running around taking shit from the zoo, which is played off as a gag based off of his character. It's established, but you don't think too much about it. Then when Spongebob throws the peanut at Clamu, she wakes up but doesn't start crying immediately. She looks around her enclosure frantically, and when she realizes she can't find her egg, she starts bawling. If Spongebob was the reason she started crying, she most likely would have started crying immediately after Spongebob threw the peanut at her. But you don't realize this at first since Spongebob was the only character who was shown doing anything to Clamu, no matter how major. And this also means that even though Spongebob seemingly started the problem, he actually indirectly helped solve the problem since Spongebob's peanut was the reason Clamu discovered her baby was missing in the first place, which is a more subtle plot twist which you don't realize until after the episode is over, but it's there. I absolutely love how the story plays out. In terms of build up and plot twist, I would say this is one of the smartest and most clever stories of season 2, but mainly based on what this episode is going for, i.e. the suspense and plot twist. Even though I've spent so long talking about the story itself, there are a lot of other things I like from this episode too. There are some smaller gags I love, like when Spongebob spits his hat like a cannonball and it lands in a kid's ice cream, Mr. Krabs is disguised when he's running around taking things, and the two scenes where Spongebob's body parts pop off of his body. I also really like Spongebob's announcer voice. You're right, Patrick. We came to see pearls 100 feet in the air, right? There are two mature jokes that I really like from this episode. When Patrick seemingly goes to lick Spongebob like he has a fetish, but then he has a yellow popsicle with Spongebob texture, and when Sandy questions if Spongebob has hair or not. Patrick himself has a lot of good scenes too. I love seeing him dress as a detective to solve the mystery when he tried eating the peanuts the crowd threw at him when he was humming along to Spongebob's speech. I'm here to lay my cards on the table. And for some reason, I also really liked hearing Patrick say this. You and or and my jerk. I, I don't know, I really just liked it for some reason. I am a SpongeBob fan, so I'm easy to please. There's also a lot of great character moments here, like when Spongebob was talking to Squidward and started getting nervous when Squidward was excited to potentially hear good news about who the culprit was. There was also the entire scene of Spongebob talking to Sandy and started getting twitchy and the encounter Spongebob has with the police. With everything that I just went over, if I didn't convince anybody there isn't more to this episode than this image that became popular, which is literally a single blink it you'll miss it frame from this whole episode which has multiple frames, then you're a lost cause. Overall, even though I have a lot of nostalgia for episode 63, Pressure, the sister episode of this one, 
Even when I was younger, I still remember so much more about this episode in comparison. But that's just because this episode has a much more interesting story, and it goes to far more than just three different locations like the previous episode. While I think the aforementioned has amazing banter, I would say The Smoking Peanut has more going for it and is a better episode overall. Like I said, I'm trying not to come off as biased or nostalgic and give each episode a fair review. The story in this episode goes much deeper and pulls off great twists that you may not even expect, and I love it for that. I wouldn't say this is the absolute best story ever told in the Spongebob series, but everything this episode set out to do, I think it achieved those things amazingly. The Smoking Peanut is a brilliant episode. I love how deep the story gets, the build up throughout, and how the plot twist at the end of the episode is pulled off. Couple that with all the funny scenes and the strong and fun character moments here, and we got ourselves an episode that will always be fun to watch. But despite the episode's title, I'm still miffed there wasn't a peanut that actually smoked, so I'm gonna do that myself. Well, it's on fire, but it's not smoking like how I wanted it to. 